Here's the thing. You can try all the new tactics. You can try all the new tricks. You can try a bunch of different stuff. But if your name isn't good and your artwork isn't good, you're not necessarily going to see that much difference. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all the time. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode, episode number 32, What's Your Podcast Brand? So again, when we start a podcast, I think many of us, including myself, we think it's just a podcast, but it is a, a business and it is a, a piece to a bigger thing. So you have to treat it like the large piece of your business that it can be. So that is what we talked about in episode number 32. Today, for episode number 33, does your name and artwork suck? I was on a call recently with somebody. I went on their show, and it was a great show. It was a great show, and I'm not going to say the name of the show because I don't want to call anybody out, but this show gets booked on my calendar, and I look at the, the name of the show, and I remember thinking to myself, it, I'm probably not going to do this. I need to research this show to, to see if it's even aligned with our message and the mission if I want to do it. I end up listening to a couple episodes or pieces of a couple episodes, and it was a really cool show. It was a very interesting show with a very cool premise and just a great conversation. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. So I did the interview. It was awesome. Very vulnerable. We had a great conversation, and I did a podcast breakthrough session with them after. There was two hosts on this show. And I said, hey, first things first here, I would suggest changing your name. I know that sucks, and I know you don't want to hear that, and I know you're probably attached to your name in some way, shape, or form, but you need to understand that if I, as a guest, did not understand what to expect, there's no way your listeners are going to know what to expect either. And it was an interesting conversation, and they took it really well. The interesting part for me is when I'm talking to podcasters, and this is, and maybe you're resonating with this if you're listening right now. There's a lot of people I'll talk to who are, you know, pick a number. I've talked to people who are 20 episodes in. I've talked to people who are 500 episodes in. And oftentimes people are looking for the new thing to do. So sometimes the new thing to do is to do different social media promotion or email list or whatever it is. But I think we forget about the stuff that we did to get started. And the two things we did to get started, we created a name. So the name of our podcast, and we created artwork. And I think to some degree, we kind of forget about that, and we don't understand the impact, whether it's positive or negative, that the name and the artwork has. So my goal in this episode is to kind of give you the perspective of maybe this is the kick in the butt you need. Maybe this is the kick in, in the butt that nobody else is really going to give you because they don't necessarily care as much as I do because I'm obsessed with this whole podcast thing. The other thought behind this is somebody asked me the other day, if I could go back, if you could start this journey all over again, what would you do differently? And I said, I would probably come up with a better name for my podcast. So when I started our other show, I started it by myself. It was called the hyper conscious podcast. Nobody is searching hyper really like nobody's going on the podcast platform of their choice and searching hyper conscious. That's just not something people are choosing. It may be if I, if I said self-awareness daily, right. Or, or whatever, self-awareness conversations, or I would have to think more about it to make it flow nicely, but some people are searching self-awareness. So I went to PodFest recently, as I've been talking about, and it was a very interesting conversation or it was a very interesting speech. I attended during one of the lunch, it was called Lunch and Learn. Um, the person there was one of the higher ups at Libsyn. And if you don't know, Libsyn is one of the largest podcast hosting um, websites there is. So they host a lot of different podcasts. He said that when you're searching for a podcast, the first word in your title, the first word in your name matters the most. And if I think about it, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you're searching for business, so imagine you go on to, let's just say Apple podcast for this example, or you can Spotify, whatever, whatever your platform of choice is, and you search business podcasts, a couple of things are going to happen. One, anything that has business in the name is going to come up. Anything that is categorized as a business podcast will come up. But when you search that and you start typing B U S I N E S S it's going to recommend you a list of shows. 
Now, is that the hack that's going to make you blow up overnight? No. But is somebody going to see just a random name? No. Nobody's going to see that. It's not going to pop up, especially if it doesn't describe what you were talking about in the podcast. So I would have changed hyperconscious to maybe, you know, self awareness society. That maybe that would have been a good one. Like self awareness society. Okay, that's the name of the podcast. It gives you a really good understanding of what we're going to talk about. And if you search self, self awareness might come up. If you search self awareness, self awareness society might come up. So that's a that's just a little takeaway from there. The other thing that I'm thinking of is a lot of people. The artwork is one of those things. Again, I think we did the same thing in the beginning. It's one of those things that you either do yourself. You maybe you know somebody in your network who can do a little graphic design. You throw somebody 10, 15, 20, 50 bucks to do your artwork, and then you kind of don't worry about it until however many years later. I always tell people number one, your artwork has to look professional. Because if you look at the other shows in your category, they all look very professional. And yes, there's that old saying do not judge a book by its cover, but we do. We do, especially books. We actually do judge books by their covers. I know in a perfect ideal world, it wouldn't be that way with people, but we're not talking about people. We're talking about a product. We're talking about a podcast here. So even my artwork for this show, I don't want it to be a picture of me necessarily. I wanted it to be the way it is because it's very, very simple and it's reverse engineered where the artwork for Next Level University is more, it's different. It's Alan's, Alan and I are on there. It's just different. It's supposed to be a little bit different. So I would challenge you to ask yourself that question. Does my artwork represent the brand? Is it high quality? Does it show the name of the podcast in a very good manner? Is there a picture of me if I think there should be? For most people, I do suggest that just because I, I think it's beneficial and I think it shows a level of quality and I also think it helps your listeners connect with you, right? Imagine if you listen to a podcast all the time and you didn't even know what that person looks like. I can only imagine it would help to know that. And then I want to challenge you to ask yourself about your title. I just wanted to take a quick second and give a shout out and a huge thank you to Next Level Podcasting Solutions, Kevin and his team. They have been incredible to work with, very flexible on the spot with any questions that I have or any concerns that I have. When I first started out my podcast, I was doing everything on my own. I have no editing background. I have no podcasting background. I knew nothing about it. And so I was bootstrapping all of this myself while I was still trying to take on my role as a full-time mom. And once I met up with Kevin and we had these discussions and I got on board with adding an editing team, oh my goodness, it just lifted this weight off of me. It lifted my time that I was spending doing my editing. And in the beginning, full transparency, when I was editing just my individual recordings, it was a little more manageable, not super manageable. And then when I started doing my interviews for the podcast, it was hours upon hours of me doing the editing that didn't include any of the promotional material that I am now getting from Kevin and his team. It wouldn't have been sustainable. I would not have been able to keep up with that. So I recommend Kevin and his team. They have done wonderful work in helping me grow my podcast. I have really enjoyed working with the editing team and it definitely feels like more of a team environment versus me hiring them to do a specific job. I mean, we all work collaboratively on the projects that I have and I have these crazy ideas sometimes and they come up with a solution to fit my needs. I, I can't recommend them enough. I've really enjoyed working with them. Kevin and the Next Level Podcasting Solutions, thank you so much for the work that you have done in the past and are continuing to do for me. I'm growing this community and growing this platform with a beautiful team that is working for me and with me to see my vision and help that come to life. So thank you again so much. I really appreciate you guys. If, if somebody comes to me, I've had people that have very good social media followings, like anywhere from 150,000 to 700,000 followers. And they'll say, what should I name my show? 
sometimes I say you should just name it your name show because you have you're recognizable enough. You have enough recognition where people are going to search for that anyway. If you say, hey, I have a podcast. This is what it's called. All right, cool. They're going to search for that. How many people are already searching your name on the podcast platform? I don't know. Probably enough to make it worth it. But for most people in your title, it should explain what you do. It, the The name of your podcast shouldn't be the the title of a chapter in a book. And I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate it. Now, I know there's other things like it's it's a bigger part of your brand and there's a lot that goes into that. But from a searchability standpoint, make sure that your title suggests what problem you're solving when it comes to your podcast. There are many anomalies, 100%, but a lot of them are built on brands that are different. So it's not necessarily apples to apples. That's what I would say. If you think of there, I think there's a podcast called Self Improvement Daily. It's like, okay, cool. If you search self improvement, that podcast is going to come up. And here's the interesting thing this is why I say, if I could go back, I might change the name of the podcast in the very beginning because this podcast, Podcast Growth University, if you search podcast, it might come up. If you search podcast growth, it might come up. It most likely will come up. I'm trying to get as much help from the algorithm as I can, where in the beginning, I didn't really understand that. I didn't really understand that. Now, this podcast already has, I mean, I'm on track to do more than double the amount of listens in the first year than we did with our, with our other podcast. And I haven't promoted it almost at all, really, right? I've thrown a couple of teaser clips up on social media. But other than that, I think a lot of it is just people searching it. And I go on a lot of, a lot of shows and they find it when they research me. But a lot of that is just coming from from organic search, which I never leverage in the beginning. So that's another thing. Yes, you can you could say, you know what, I'm going to name this the, you know, the John Doe or the Jane Doe podcast. I'm just going to name it my name, and I'm going to grind my face off and grow the brand. Cool. If that's what you want to do, you can do that. I would suggest probably naming it something that tells people what they're going to get. Just like you know, just like a book, Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is one of my favorite books. What are you what are you going to get? High performance habits by Brendan Burchard. What are you going to get? Right? This is marketing by Seth Godin. What are you going to get? The, you know, there's there's a list of a million of those. So you know, any leadership book, it usually has the word leadership in it. That would be my suggestion. Because here's the thing, you can try all the new tactics, you can try all the new tricks, you can try a bunch of different stuff, but if your name isn't good and your artwork isn't good, you're not necessarily going to see that much difference. And this is one of the recommendations I give pretty often with people is just check in with your name and check in with your artwork. Go on Fiverr and find somebody for 50 bucks and get them to create you five or six versions of a new, a new logo. See what it looks like. See if you like it. See if it looks more professional. Ask people, and this is another great thing, when you go to an event, okay, here's a great thing. When you go to like an event, it doesn't necessarily have to be a podcasting event. It can be any event where you have the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with other human beings. People are most likely going to say, hey, what do you do? And you can say, oh, I'm a podcaster. What's the name of your podcast? They'll say most, most often, and you tell them. You can tell very quickly whether or not that name is landing. When I used to say it's called the hyperconscious podcast, I would get many people that would say, wait, what? Can you repeat that? I would also get other people that would say, what does that mean? When I went to PodFest, I met a lot of people and they said, what's the name of your podcast? And I said, it's called Next Level University. Every single person I said that to said, oh, I, I've heard of that. Or I think I've heard of that. I don't really believe everybody has actually heard of it. I just think it's a really good name that people feel like they can recognize. So that's another interesting thing. I don't believe that everybody in there has heard of our podcast. I mean, yeah, we have a big show, but not big to the point where everybody in the audience would have heard it. So that's a whole nother thing where when you have a bold name that is just really good in terms of explaining what you do, I think that helps people self-identify as, oh yeah, I would be a listener of that show. We're hyper-conscious. Nobody really knows what that means. So just something to think about. Again, some episodes I dive, I'm going to dive and I have dove, have dip, yeah, have dove, whatever the proper phrasing for that is. Uh, 
I'll go very deep into business and this is prospecting and this is building relationships, but other things I want to be just an easy, an easy listen. And then there's just a couple actionable takeaways. Check your artwork and check your title. And you can like Google your title and see what comes up. Google other titles of podcasts that you think yours might be able to transition to. Look at artworks and see what other artworks are are popping and, and uh, on the top charts and in your category. Last thing I'll say, according to the individual on stage that was from Libsyn, Apple Podcasts specifically does not like when there's text in the lower 15% of your artwork. So in theory, the title of your podcast should be on the top. If you're going to have a picture, it should probably be under that. And then you should probably have no text below your picture. So just a thought, again, I don't know if it's just the algorithm is looking at it and it's figuring out like, oh, we don't like this. I don't really know the exact science behind it because there's a lot that goes into it, but that is a piece of information that I took away from PodFest that I figure the least I can do is share with you. So check your title, check your artwork. Again, as always, if you want help with this, this is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. I have named so many podcasts at this point. I help people name their episodes. So yeah, if you need any help with this, please let me know. We can go through and say, okay, let's look at your artwork. Let's look at your title. How does that work? How does that connect to your intro? How does that connect to your outro? How does that connect to your trailer and all that happy jazz? So if you need any help, please reach out. I would love to help. And again, it's free. It's a free 30 minute call. I'm not going to sell you on anything. We also do have a graphic design team as well. And it's much cheaper than you would guess. So if you need help with artwork, whether it's the artwork for the show or maybe some artwork for social media or you need some like YouTube, Facebook, banner, header stuff, let us know. We can also do that. So next week for episode number 34, we are going to talk about the top three things that matter most when it comes to getting on the top charts. I don't know if that's going to be the exact title. I'm just looking at my notes and that's what I'm coming with. But it's going to be the top three things that matter the most for top charts. A lot of people want to get on Apple, the top charts or Spotify top charts or chartable top 200 or whatever it is. So we will talk a little bit about that next week. And hint, there's one big thing that people think matters that doesn't matter in terms of the algorithm. So I will share that with you next week. I hope you are crushing it. I hope you are taking value from these episodes. I've gotten a lot of really, really good feedback. Somebody left me, I think, a one-star review on Apple. So if you want to help me make that look better, please leave a rating that is truthful. I'm not asking you to leave five stars unless you've had a five-star experience, but I hope that is what you're getting and that is always my goal. Until next week, keep crushing it, keep podcasting, and we will see you soon.
Hi, my name's John Laredo, and I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Palmieri. I had uh, reached out to him. He had been referred to me when I had shared with a friend of mine some interest in uh, doing a podcast. And he said, you've got to use Kevin. He's fantastic. He's the best around. He'll get you started and off the ground and and uh, soaring high in no time. And take it from somebody who knows nothing about podcasting other than maybe saying a few things. But as far as behind the scenes, the startup, everything, I knew nothing. Uh, Kevin was phenomenal in terms of leading me through the whole process. And not just easy to work with, but really, really knows his stuff. A great combination between leading me through all the stuff I had no idea what I was doing, but also really listening to me and understanding what it was I was trying to accomplish and what my vision is. So whether you're looking for somebody to, to help you and get you started or somebody as I've done where I'm putting it entirely in his hands because I've got total trust and confidence in him and he is a true pro and easy to work with, any of those ends of the spectrum, you're gonna have a lot of success and a lot of fun working with Kevin. Trust me, thanks. Next Level University and Kevin is exactly where you need to be if you're a podcaster. When I first started out just a few months ago, I had no clue on the direction I was going. I was getting hustled by another company that was giving me not even close to the value that Kevin and Next Level U was giving me. They literally changed the trajectory of my podcast, have helped me out tremendously. They understand the clients. I promise you, you will not go wrong with dealing with Kevin and Next Level U. I'll see you there. Hi there, this is Dr. Taryn McCarthy and I am the host of the Business of Happiness podcast, which would not be in existence were it not for the one and only incredible Kevin Palmieri. Seriously, I am so indebted to Kevin for the service that he provides. Every week he meets with me, he has been coaching me on how to initiate and launch this podcast. He helped me put it together with his great expertise and every week his whole team works tirelessly to get these podcasts uploaded to Buzzsprout and to 
deliver my content to my audience. I am so grateful. I couldn't say enough about him. In fact, we've been working together so well. I've seen so much wonderful um, input from my listeners and asking me for more that in just a few weeks, we're going to be doubling the number of podcasts we produce per week. So this trajectory is just flying and I'm really enjoying the whole process. So I couldn't say enough about him. Please, if this is something you're considering, I highly recommend him and reach out to me anytime if you have any questions about our experience. Good luck. Bye-bye. Hey, I wanted to give my experience working with Kevin and the rest of the Next Level University team. It has been such a seamless uh, 